Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be checking out the Unify EV Station Lite. I'm really excited to try this one. This video is going to be kind of an unboxing. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually install it. But I think this is a really cool product. It finally came in stock for just a little bit for enough for me to order it. It is now out of stock again, of course. But um, I'm really excited to show it off in this video. There's not a lot of videos that I've seen um, where people actually wire up themselves. So I'm going to talk all in the next video about how we're wiring it, the exact wire that we're going to use. I'm doing it all myself. Uh, with the help of a electrician but um yeah so i'm really excited to try this out let's get this thing open and check it out um this thing is about 500 dollars, i think uh, when you get it from the ubiquity store if you can find it in stock it's been going out of stock a lot um, but i do think it's a really really cool product and um yeah i'm just super excited to try it out so um in the box what we've got um over on the side it's kind of hard to see but it looks like we've got the actual charger over here. So that's the cable that goes to the car. Um, and this does, this is kind of a um, EV charger that um, will work on most third party cars that are not Teslas. So this is the actual charger. So there's an installation guide. I'm not gonna take this paper off because I don't wanna scratch it up yet, but there's essentially a black finish behind it. Um, and this is kind of the face plate that people see. It kind of snaps into the back plate, which we'll see here in a second. Down here, uh, this is what the charger will rest on, on the wall. So um, when you're not using it, this will be um, kind of on the wall and you'll rest the actual charger in there. Um, and then moving down, we have some fittings here to get the cable in and out of the um, charger. Next, we have this. I'm honestly not quite sure what it is. Probably something to hold the cable somewhere. Um, we'll figure that out later. Um, additionally, we have some pretty large mounting screws with drywall anchors. Um, we will be drywall anchoring this, not to a stud, uh, because I don't think the location we're in will have a stud. Um, and then we got the massive charger right here. This thing's huge. Okay, so on the charger, there's kind of a mounting guide, I think. And then in here is the actual um, bread and butter of what it does. So essentially, you just take a um, line in right here, um, and then it comes out, it does all the power conversions and stuff in here. Um, pretty much all this is all this is is basically a very fancy um, AC to DC converter. So it's converting the um, um, alternating current over to DC current for the car because that's what it charges at, from what I believe. Um, and then it does this at 50 to 70 amps. You're supposed to have a 70 amp breaker, um, but it does up to 50 amps of charging for the device. Um, and the EV station light's really cool because um, you get all the monitoring and stuff from Unify Connect. Um, but then you also, I believe, there is some kind of billing support too. Obviously for a house, we're not gonna be worried about billing, but um, it is kind of cool that we can do that. We can keep track of how much we're charging, all that kind of stuff. Um, right here is the actual charging cable um, that comes in the box. So this is also one of the longer cables that I've seen. Um, it is pretty long and I think it'll work pretty well. Yeah, so we do have a Tesla Model Y. Um, my dad does, so that's why he wanted this. He charges at work, but he wants to be able to charge at home fast enough. Um, this is a 11 kilowatt level two electric vehicle charging station. So the charging cable length is about 23 feet. It's got USB-C, apparently Bluetooth, um, gigabit RJ45 and Wi-Fi. So we'll probably be Wi-Fi in this because I don't want to have to wire it up. Although I don't know where the ethernet even is on this device, honestly. So maybe it's on this. Yeah, there's the ethernet right here. I'm on this. So possibly we could PoE power this just to try it out. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, there is kind of a covering here for a USB-C uh, port. I don't know what that USB-C port is for. So yeah, this should be able to charge most cars pretty quickly. Um, obviously it's nothing near a supercharger. And if we did want to get near a supercharger, we'd have to get a whole new meter on our house because I think we only have like 150 amp service to the house or something. So um, we would need to kind of increase that. But um, for what we're doing at home, just some casual charging. Um, typically it'll be slower charging because we don't need to charge incredibly fast overnight, but um, it is nice to have the additional charging capacity if we need it. Um, and we're gonna install this between two garage stalls. That way, if we ever get two cars that have electric charging, then we could use this on both cars because the cable is 23 feet and it could reach. Really excited that we finally got this in. Um, I have a Lowe's cart um, going and we have everything that we need on here. Uh, we're gonna use 22-2-2 cable. So it's SER aluminum. Um, that is going to get um, power to our sub panel that we're gonna add into the garage and the sub panel is going to be a 100 amp sub panel um, and put a 70 amp breaker on there and that will run a 6.2 Romex to this thing, obviously in conduit. Um, apparently to get the full 70 amp rating that this thing has um, with the size of terminals that are on here, we have to use 6.2 Romex 
um, to get all of the um, power through there safely. Um, and that does have to be, like I said, in some kind of conduit, PVC or whatever, metal conduit. Um, but in business applications, you would typically always have conduit to these electrical appliances anyways. So um, just in a residential environment, it's just a little different because we are not used to having conduit to everything. But that is pretty much all we need. Um, it is gonna be about 200 feet to get to the sub panel and then an additional 50 feet probably from the sub panel to the actual charger. So it'll be a pretty, pretty long project, I should say, um, that we have to run this um, pretty thick 100 amp cable through. Um, yeah, it's two by two by two by four. I don't know what the heck that means. All I know is this cable's like $2.40 a foot, um, but then the cable to get the charger's like $5 a foot or something, it's pretty expensive. So yeah, like I said, stay tuned. We'll do a follow-up video here shortly um, of the actual install. We're doing that hopefully this weekend. Um, it's just a matter of doing it at this point. But I wanted to kind of get this video out there because if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, I'd like to see those comments right now ahead of when I do the install and ahead of when I actually um, hook everything up. So if you have any questions that you want to see or anything you specifically want to see in the follow-up video, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm really excited to see how this connects into Unify Connect. That's also something that we're going to figure out. Um, I'm, I have used Unify Connect before, but really just for like their digital signage. I have not used it for devices like this. Um, this is quite different than what I've seen before. So really cool stuff though. I'm really excited. Thank you for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next video whenever I post the follow-up video.